Good morning. <laughs> and apologies that, uh, despite the name Schneider, um, you've heard the most of my German, so I'll be speaking to you in English today. Um, it's energizing to share the room with so many people who are not only envisioning um, the future of industry, cities, and economies, but shaping them. In 2013, I launched an apparel manufacturing company uh, just 45 minutes north of Boston in the U.S. And as you would expect, this is not typically a U.S. startup at this point. Um, many thought that apparel manufacturing was an industry of the past. Um, we launched in Lawrence, Massachusetts. This is the city where the U.S. Industrial Revolution started. It's also a city that has struggled with poverty and high unemployment and is working actively to redefine itself. Um, but launching 99 Degrees Custom reflects my belief, my vision, um, that apparel manufacturing can scale in Western economies and many of the industries that we thought were, were lost to our economies have future opportunity. It also reflects the belief that uh, that we can create jobs that will bridge our workforce with the future innovation economy. I'd like to start by talking with you about four changes um, that I see in our future uh, in the next decade, and also two challenges that I think we all can, can embrace um, as we look to the future. Um, the changes start with China. Um, as we look at China and um, and scan the globe for an alternative as labor rates rise and its workforce ages, um, we see that industry becomes increasingly fragmented. This is particularly true in apparel manufacturing where brands are overseeing production in South America, the Far East, Southeast Asia, the Caribbean, and Central America. Supply chains and oversight become increasingly complex and costly. Um, and this requires a better approach. The second change, which Mr. Seeger spoke about earlier, uh, is speed and the unprecedented uh, level of speed that we're seeing and that, that is demanded. So my business competes largely because speed is a competitive advantage that is rivaling cost in some markets. Um, and so speed enables us to outcompete competition um, to reduce inventory holding costs and to produce just ahead of demand and really in many, in many ways um, in response to demand or on demand um, as we're seeing an increasingly customized and individualized um, type of demand. Proximity to demand becomes important and, um, and collaboration between among uh, design, development and manufacturing becomes important. Uh, the, third, the third change, or the third point, is automation, and of course that is upon us. Um, and it polarizes the world into the places that invest in technology and automation in a high-tech industry, and places that are left with um, very low-cost uh, manual industry. And the middle, that middle, falls away. And so we have this choice, and, and the choice is, with automation is where do we produce? Um, finally, something that's really exciting to me is watching supply chains merge in new ways. And so from the apparel perspective, of course, wearable technology is a place where we're seeing the tech supply chain merging with a consumer product supply chain in really interesting ways. And so to be an apparel manufacturing company now means that we must be part technology company. And the same is true of technology companies as they must be more, uh, or at least in part, consumer product technology uh, company. This brings forward incredible opportunities for places like Boston, Lawrence, and Berlin, uh, where we have both technology and manufacturing expertise. So these four factors, fragmentation of industry, speed as a competitive advantage, automation, and the merging of supply chains, really uh, allow us to envision a new form of industry. One that is agile, more collaborative, highly automated, um, and incredibly fast changing. But also, perhaps regional, serving regional markets. 
this is the context in which U.S. apparel manufacturing makes perfect sense, and it's incredibly exciting to me to be in this space at this time. Um, whether we're innovating old industries and bringing them into something new, or, or innovating in, in new industries altogether, um, we must invest in place, and we must invest in, in the industry's future. And so I think that we share two incredible challenges. And these are challenges that I like to see as opportunities. And in fact, they are the opportunities um, that I wake up every morning feeling um, as part of a startup. Um, they're my fuel. Um, the first challenge or opportunity um, is how do we together invest in an ecosystem that supports this kind of future tech-infused industry? Um, how do we reshore old industries and transform them into something new or revamp industries that have been, that have been here? Um, how do we support regional manufacturing hubs and regional supply chains? How do we maximize communication and collaboration to support speed and agility? What spaces foster this new regional manufacturing approach? And how do we better uh, partner with incumbent manufacturers and startups together, as we just discussed a few minutes ago, um, and, and learn to kind of merge supply chains across what was disparate industry. The second challenge that I think we, we share um, is figuring out what inclusive innovation looks like. What kind of jobs do we create in an age of automation? Um, how do we train our workforce? to enable automation to take place. And equally important, what is the human side of automation? Um, because the human side is key. Uh, problem solving, continuous improvement, improving our systems, in improving our, our processes. And a workforce that's able to engage, to add value, to help us better meet demand. So personally, I'm taking on this challenge um, in apparel manufacturing, which is a, it's a huge break from the mass production that our industry has, has been dominated in. And of course, we have a, a perspective of piecework which must be broken, so we're coming from a very um, specific place. But how do we compensate and empower? How do we have our employees listen like entrepreneurs and think like engineers? Um, it's not easy, but it's absolutely necessary. And it, is, uh, it requires both the public sector and, and the industrial sector to, to work together and to lead. Um, I want to envision a future where we ensure that innovation is inclusive of all, especially those whose jobs may be replaced by automation, those, um, those who are mid and base, base and mid-level income earners. Um, one of the reasons that I love apparel is that we see the human side of manufacturing still, and yet we see the potential for automation. It's a pretty interesting place to be. And so as we build an ecosystem together where uh, urban technology can thrive, um, the challenge is to couple the best of technology and the best of our people to assure agility and ever-changing industry, ever-changing places and the factories and the cities of the future. And so as you work to shape Berlin, know that I join you from the US in shaping industry and an emerging city. And together I hope that we might shape a future in which we all aspire to work and live. Thank you.